Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the branch table and Plant 3D and customize it and some do's and don'ts in it and to this morning and basically get my computer working. All right, so here's kind of an overview we're going to do. We're going to actually cover part use priority uh, in the uh, spec itself. We're going to do one thing there because it is sort of related to the branch in use uh, in the branch table editor. So uh, we're going to cover that topic as well, although the, that will be a, just a small portion of what we're doing. And mainly we're going to spend our time in the branch table editor. We'll go over the branch legend, uh, the two different parts of the branch legend. Uh, then we'll apply some branch fittings. We will cover multi-branch selection. And I'm going to tell you why I personally do not use multi-branch selection. Uh, but um, we will at least cover it and show you how to do it. Uh, options for unavailable branch sizes, what happens when uh, they're not available and how you can fix those things. And then actually to see uh, the application of a branch working in the model. And that's when I'll show you why I don't use multi-branch selection personally. So right now, let me switch over to AutoCAD Plant 3D. Just give me one second to close the PowerPoint and switch. We're going straight to the spec editor. So this is the class, the CS150 spec. It is not out of the box but it is close. This is actually a little bit further down the road uh, than out of the box because it's got some custom things. I'm using a custom catalog. Uh, this is one that uh, we've created in our Plant 3D Advanced class and that we work with. And I've used it a few times in other webinars and videos. Uh, lots of times some of these components were just added and customized for a particular video, for instance, when we did the webinar on um, bolts, I added the butterfly valve, wafer valve in here so I could do that particular webinar. So some of these things are just items that were added at that time for different webinars, for different classes, for different demos, stuff like that. So it's constantly growing. Uh, this is the most recent of it because I needed a custom uh, piece to do this particular webinar here. But other than that, uh, this is mostly out of the box as far, as far as this, but it really doesn't matter. The branch table is going to work the same either way. And the branch table itself is completely out of the box. It has not been modified one bit. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to start with talking about part use priority and branch in use. And that's referring to these two parts. I'm on the spec editor tab. And we're referring to these two columns here, part use priority and branch in use. So first, let me show you the part use priority in case you're not familiar with it. I'm coming down to the flanges. And you'll see here, uh, I've got a bunch of green lights is what I call them. I'm not sure of the official name. But here in the, under the flange, I have two uh triangles yellow triangles with an exclamation point in it and that's a warning that there's not a part use priority set up for those particular flanges uh, what's happening here and why it's only on those two is you can see this one is three inch to 24 inch slip on this one is let me get my cursor off of that before i point out all right so three inch to 24 inch slip on this is three inch to 24 inch weld neck so i have a clash here it does not know when it's auto routing which one to use do i use the slip on do i use the weld deck i don't have a clash on the others because they only go up to two inch the socket weld ones and the other one is above 24 inch so that's why there's no uh green light or uh, explanation point there or warning because there's no clash. This is actually a clash in the in the software that it says, okay, when I'm auto routing and I place something in that requires a flange, which flange do you want me to use? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the part used to where I want to use a weld neck up to 10 inch and then 12 inch and above I want to slip on. So I can do that through the part use priority. So I'm going to double click this warning here. And as you can see, nothing's marked as resolved. 
and that's because it became unresolved as soon as I added that slip on in there everything got unresolved because there's the clash and as you can see when I hit three inch I want it to be a weld neck priority so I'm going to select weld neck and just hit the priority unfortunately you have to do these one at a time you can't just go in and say take this range and change the priority so I'm changing each priority to weld neck from 3 inch to 10 inch after that I slip on is what I want so I don't need to do anything to any of those but if I hit OK right now they are still going to be marked with the exclamation point because they don't become resolved unless I mark them as resolved so what I'm going to do after I've got this set up is I'm going to select the three inch and then hold my shift key down all the way to 24 inch and mark them all as resolved hit OK they become green lights so in this case the part use priority has happened so let me show you what that does I want to save my spec come over here to plant 3d for this to I have to load my spec so I would right click here in pipe specs in my project manager and check for spec updates it's going to find it update my pipe specs now it's working so if I came over here and I'm going to go put in a flange check valve here's a check valve that's flanged I'm going to place one here and I'll place one here that's an 8 inch and a 12 inch and as you can see I got a well neck on my 8 inch and a slip on on my 12 inch so that's exactly what I set up in my spec as the part use priority so that's how that works it's just setting up which one it's going to use when I place anything that requires a flange now in this case I don't need this for the rest of this to show anything so I'm going to go ahead and remove those delete them because that 8 inch pipe is all I'm going to work with to show anything else for the rest of this webinar I'm going to come back over here to my spec <clears throat> if I go a little bit further eventually you'll see I'm seeing some things that have both a clash and a branch in use all right, so the branches are for just what they're saying, branches. You're teeing off, you're putting a stub in or weld a lead or an OLED. You're going to create a branch off your header. Whenever a branch is in use, part use priority means nothing. I can set this part use priority all day long right here for this uh, socket and weld a lead. I can come down here to the T's. I could do the same thing there. As long as there's branch and use working, those part those part priorities mean nothing. So don't even bother setting up part use priorities for anything that's going to be used in a branch. Now, you'll see some others here I'm not going to talk too much about, but I'll just mention real quick that are not set up here. It really part use priority makes no difference on valves, instruments, things like that. Uh, there's really no use in instruments and valves of doing a part use priority so I never bother because it has no effect because usually valves and instruments are completely different from each other uh, so if I was to do the part use priority I'm actually telling it well use a ball valve before a gate valve and when I place a gate valve it doesn't care if I've got what the priority is so who cares so you can ignore part use priority for valves instruments things like that anything else it comes in real handy and you want to set up so the valves and the instruments don't worry about it branch and use don't worry about it don't waste your time on that branch and use because this is where you set up the part use priority for a branch so we're going to come over here to the branch table and we'll start working here so right now uh, you can see I've got half inch through 24 inch already filled out which I'm not going to accept those I'm going to change those anyways but notice 30 through 48 is not filled out the reason being is out of the box carbon steel CS150 spec does not have 30 inch and above pipe it only has through 24 inch I have added the larger diameter pipe 
to go up to 48 inch in the spec and by doing so it added those to the branch table uh, because it needs to be defined and that's as an instance of a time when you would need to define it is if you've added additional pipe that's all it takes to need a, a branch table defined just to show you that i'm going to take this three quarter inch and i'm going to remove the three quarter inch pipe i'll come over here open it up there's my three quarter inch pipe i'm going to remove it from the spec hit ok come back to the branch table three quarter inch pipe is gone from the branch table so it's literally reading whatever pipes are in the spec to determine my header and my branches so that's the first thing now in real life if i'm going to remove three quarter inch pipe i'd probably want to get rid of the t's and the reducers and stuff like that i'm not going to do that right now for the time uh, in this webcast but i'm just showing you how this works so there you go i've got the three quarter inch pipe removed uh the first thing here i'm going to deal with is the legend over here again you will recognize this if you've ever looked at the branch table as the out of the box legend so basically the way this works is if i look over here you can see this one's using t001 and the s001 t001 being a t with a butt weld 001 being a socolet. No, excuse me, it's S001. I read that wrong. T, butt weld T, S001 being stub in. So those are the two choices it has. That's a multi branch right there. If you look at the one below it, right here, T002, R001, and the S001. So the T002 being a reducing T. The T00 or the R001 is the T in a reducer, and the S being a stub. So it's got a, a multi branch of three different options here set up out of the box. So, what I want to do first is I hate. This is just a personal opinion. I hate these symbol names. I want them to mean something to where I don't have to look at this legend constantly to figure it out. So, I'm going to go down here to edit legend. This is divided up into two areas branch connections, part setup, and branch table options. I'm going to start with the branch table options because it's the simplest. Again, header, branch. If I want to rename them, I can. That's just the title it's using. Legend notes are right here. And it's being displayed above the above there. There's not a note there, but let's say I wanted to put in here. This is this is my legend. Just to put something in there, I'm going to put it below. Apply it. Hit OK. I didn't have to hit apply. So down here, you see, since it's below, there's my note. Um, if you don't want a note and they even want it to show up, you can say display no notes, which is what I do. So I don't need a note. Over here, you have your branch list cells. I usually use the out of the box, display all branches and list cells. But again, I don't use multi branches, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but if I did only display the first branch, hit OK, it's going to change this to where all I see eventually takes a second there you go it, it's showing me that but you can see wherever there's a multi branch it's got the three dots uh, another one if i did use multi branches i probably would like this one i'm going to put it back on all branches and i'm going to say list branch list cells is shaded and so the multi branches get shaded that's kind of cool i don't mind that one as much uh, that's not a, not a bad idea. I'm going back to out of the box, except for I'm not going to display notes. Now, up here at the top part, this is where we're actually defining our branches. And this is where that symbol name is being set. So I like to name them something that means a little more to me. So this butt weld T and reducer, I'm just going to call it T and R. T and reducer. Stub in. I'm real creative. Stub. The butt weld T, I call them a T, lowercase bw for butt weld, because down here you'll see I have T 
socket weld. This is a reducing T, so I just simply call it RT. And the socket I would call SO for socket. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and what you'll see happen, it'll update my legend. It's updating the table right now. And the table updated accordingly. So it's a lot easier to see. That's a stub. That's a butt weld T. That's a reducing T, a T with a reducer and a stub. I don't have to look at the legend. So name it. My, my personal opinion is name these things to where you can recognize them without having to look at that legend constantly. Because who wants to sit here and memorize R001 and stuff like that, especially if you're dealing with tables a lot. And this is something, when I was a CAD manager, this would be something I would do when we first got a project. We got the project, we got the contract, I'd go through the contract and set all the branch tables for that particular contract. Because when contract may require a reducing T. And another contract may require a T and reducer. So that would, this matters per job. It was something I would do every single project. So back to the legend. The sequence here can also be controlled. I like to do things like this. I like to put the socket weld since it's two inch and below first and the butt weld. So I got my straight T's first by size. Then I'm going to take the T and reducer, put it second. Actually, the reducing T, put it third. Then the T and reducer, stub in socket. That's just a personal method. that I like to put these in myself. Some people put them in alphabetical, but you can do that by pushing these and moving the branches around. But I have weldolettes. If you went back and looked at my um, uh, out of the box, not out of the box, I looked at my spec, I have weldolettes in my spec. I also have socolettes larger than 42 inch because you can see here I've got a 42 inch socolette but I've got 42 8 inch pipe so I, I had to create a custom 48 inch whoops oh man I cannot believe I just did that how much did I just lose I know I didn't lose that other stuff I lost this. So let me catch up. I am not, I've got to learn to start saving faster. I'm not going to readjust the, these other than the names uh, just for sake of time. I'm not going to change the sequence over there. You saw how to do that, but I do want to save these names RT and T socket weld and socket. All right, so we're going to hit that, let it update, and then I am going to save it. So I don't, I'm going to start saving this every now and then because hitting that escape key closes the um, spec editor. All right, so I'm back where I was. So now I know that I have socolets larger than 42 inch. So I want to add that in here. I'm going to add a branch. I'm going to change it to an OLED for the spec part. That's what socolets I or OLETs I have in my spec. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up to the 48 inch socolette. And I'm going to call this one SOL for socolette large. And then over here, I'll change that to large also so that I'll recognize it. Lots of times I will go through these and I'll remove some things in here, you know, in the legend name if I don't like the legend name. But that's, you know, again, that's up to you. Um, I want to weld a let because I know I have those in here. So I want to add a branch, which will be another OLED. But this one is going to be a weld a let. And for it, I'm going to call it WO. I do like these to be lower click case. So weld a let or title case. So once I've got the branch, I hit OK. It adds those to to the legend over here. Man, I should have hit save first. Let's hope I don't. Hit. All right. It's that double click on the escape key that does that to me. All right. So there you go. Socolette and Weldolette were added. And since they're added, I can now use them in the branch table. So let's show you how this branch table part over here works. I like to start from scratch. To me, it's just a little bit easier. So I like to blank everything out and start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and use, select this bottom one, select this right here. I'm literally going to take, 
where it says branch fitting, go to multi-branch selection and clear everything out where nothing's selected and hit OK and it should clear everything out. So I've got a completely empty one. Now, once I get going with these things, if I'm using the same spec over and over again, I probably don't have to clear these out, but it's kind of nice if you're starting one from scratch like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these four through one and a half inch there. Ah, my three quarter inch pipe is back in. Let me get rid of that. I did not save it for that one, and that's going to mess up my thought process to have that extra pipe in there. So go ahead and get rid of that three quarter inch pipe. Come back over here. We'll save it again. All right, so these first four, half inch through two inch, I'm going to make those a T with a, the straight T because this is when you're looking at it. This is doing a two inch header with a two inch. So it's a straight T. So all I need here is a socket weld. That's all I have in there. So I'm going to do it this way first. Up here, I'm going to pick a T socket weld, and it will assign to those four. Once I hit apply to table, a straight T that's a socket weld T. I'm going to go across the top here, and the rest of these are going to be a butt weld T. So the first thing I'm doing is just getting all my straight T's in there. I'm going to change the branch fitting to T butt weld and apply to table. They would have been in a different sequence if I would have maintained that sequence here. When I'm looking at this list, that sequence would have matched. But there it is. I've just assigned those. That's just a single branch connection. I'm just telling it this is what I want you to default to. This is the priority in those situations. Use a straight either socket weld or a butt weld T. Now I'm going to go through here and do some of these at the bottom. So I'm going to select this one here, hold my shift key, and since I know all my two inch is different, that's what I'm after is the two inch. But I also know the socket, I only have the I don't have that size here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I know I don't have the 48 inch size. I have those, I had to use the SOL for that one. And I'm going to use my control key to do that. So I use my shift key to pick the first one and the last one. And then I use my control key to remove what I didn't want to change. In this case, I'm going to right click, just like up here at the branch. Oh, let me do this first. On the branch fitting up here, I want those to be socolettes. If I choose socolette from the branch fitting up here, notice apply table is grayed out. It won't let me use it. This is one of the reasons I personally, until I did, was preparing for this webinar, I never use it because it doesn't, that's telling me that it's grayed out. That's something I have selected. It's not going to let me allow to do socolette because I do not have a socolette of that size in my spec. But it doesn't tell me which one. So what I like to do instead of using the branch fitting is just use the right click. And there's the SO. So I'm going to pick it. And because that was grayed out and I just did that, it says, hey, something doesn't work. You have two choices. I can either select a branch size or do not change branch fitting. But that means go ahead and set it to a socolette, even though it may not have one in the spec. This time I'm going to do, so I usually do that one myself. This time I'm going to do the select a valid branch fitting. Sometimes it comes handy, so it's not a bad thing to do. I'm going to pick that one and it says something can only do a stub in, so I'll go ahead and select it and hit OK. So there you can see it was all about this one right here. There's no one inch by half inch socolet in my spec, so therefore it can't set the socolet setting. That's why this was grayed out, and that's why it gave me that message of something's wrong, but it gave me the opportunity to change it to something I could do, which in this case was a stub in. If I would move that one completely from it, notice now this is not grayed out anymore, and I could apply it. 
but there was no way for me to tell from this which one was the problem. So I like the right click better because then I could set it and it just tells me, gives me that other message where I can see how I can fix it. Or if I do the do not change, it'll give me a red box, which I'll show you that in just a minute. First though, let's set the next two. I'm gonna come through each of these. And I'm just selecting them with my control key. It would be nice if there was another way, but if I did the shift key, let me, I won't do it this time. It would have picked a bunch of stuff for me to remove. So this was actually faster. So everything I haven't assigned there, actually I got some stuff set there, don't I? Oh man, I was about to do some real damage there. Let me do that again. I still had selected all those socolettes. I forgot to click something to get rid of those selections. So I'm just doing the next two rows under the straight until I get to this one right there. For those, I want to set them up with a T and a reducer. So I'm going to uh, a T and a reducer, and I'm going to go ahead and set up the multi-branch of a reducing T, and then we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to come up here, and I could just pick T and reducer here, but if I want to do the multi-branch, just like I did it earlier up here to clear it out, I could do it right here. And I can say I want a T and a reducer, and I want a reducing T. If I would have kept it the way I resequenced a minute ago, the reducing T would have been on top, and it would have been part use priority one. But since I lost that, I'll just show it here. So to reduce, if I want the reducing T to be the part use priority, remember it's similar to what we did with those flanges, I make it one. If I want the T and reducer to be the part use priority, then it needs to be number one. So when I hit OK, I get this again. That tells me something here is not going to work. This time I'm going to choose do not change branch fitting. This is my personal preference. And it will go through. It picks everything. If I click out of it, now you can see these did not work. All of these did. Now I chose a reducing T. It could be that, could be the issue because I chose that reducing T. Or it could be the T and the reducer. Now I know I have straight T's those sizes because I can see that here. So I know it's not the T and reducer. It's either the reducer or the reducing T. I'm going to go ahead and just short tell you what I need to do here is go over to my spec and figure out what the problem is because something's missing. Now I'm going to just go ahead and skip the T and reducer because I, you can see here I've got 3 inch to 48 inch. I've got all those sizes already in there in reducing T. That's not the problem. But notice I don't have a, a reducer larger than 24 inch and that's my problem. So here, I created some 30 to 48 inch reducers that's in my custom catalog because they weren't all there out of the box. That was a problem. So I created my own in my custom catalog. I'm going to add that to my spec. I don't have a part use priority issue because that's larger than these. So that's not an issue. I'm going to go ahead and hit save so I don't lose that come back over to my branch table. Still have an issue. The reason I still have an issue is I don't have that reducer I just added to the catalog in my legend over here. This one is T and reducer is using this reducer that only goes up to 24 inch. It's using that reducer. So therefore I need to add that to my legend for a T and reducer option. So I'm going to keep it do not change. <coughs> I'm going to edit the legend. This time I'm going to add a branch that will be a T and it's going to be a straight T. So there's my butt weld T's, 3 to 48 inch, but I'm going to add a reducer to it. And for that one, my reducer is going to be my large diameter reducer I just added to the spec. I'm going to call this one T and reducer large and also to show you this right here can be named whatever you want it now I want to select the valid branch fitting for those right there there's my teen reducer large hit OK I'm good to go 
I didn't add the multi branch of the RT in there because like I've been telling you, I personally don't use them. And I'm gonna show that at the very end of what it, why I do not. But back on this, you've seen how to do multi branches. You've seen what happens in a couple of situations. I'm gonna go ahead, finish this out really as quick as I can here. I'm gonna set that to the socket at large, because uh, I know in my spec I only have up to four inch. The rest of the, oh, these two here, I want to be a reducing T. So this gives me another option to show you what happens with the spec change. So let me go ahead and get the reducing T in here first. I'm gonna just right click, reducing T, do not change it. So what's happened, I've got two large ones where I don't have a reducing T, I've got two small ones. Those two small ones I know don't exist in the spec, even if I wanted them or in my catalog and I don't want to create a custom one. I want to simply change those two to a weld let. But these two, watch what happens if I add those to my spec. So I need a 42 by 20 and a 48 by 24. I'm going to come over here to my reducing T. Uncheck the hide parts. Let's go see what's already there out of the box. And there it is. I've got a 48 by 24 right there. So I'll add that and I need a 42 by 20. 42 by 20, that's a 40. There it is, 42 by 20 right there. So I'll add that. We'll hit okay. That's been added to my spec now. I'll hit save simply by adding it to the spec resolve the issue. So sometimes it's as simple as just getting it in your spec. Sometimes it's as simple as creating a new one and changing it to something else. It's just whatever you need to do to get these to work. The rest of these I want to try to make weld -alettes. Again, if I do this to this, look for using my shift key, I got a lot to remove, but that's probably less to remove than what I would the other way, or I could have picked maybe a different option and had a few less to remove and add. At the same time, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these real quick. I really would love it if we could just do a crossing selection. That is actually on the wish list, so if you ever wanna go to the ideas page for Autodesk, it's on the wish list to do a crossing selection stuff. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and make all these weld lets, and I'm gonna select a valid branch setting, for stub, so a few of those you can see change to stub because I don't have weld alets. that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to get the weld alets in there I have. And I've got a now a completely com done branch table and you need to have one completely done or else you will get some weird results. So you need to make always make sure these are done. Now I wanna show you why I don't care for the multi-branch. I'm gonna take this eight inch by six inch one here. I'm gonna leave it, there's eight inch by six inch. I'm gonna leave it with the multi-branch of T and reducer and RT. This one here, I'm gonna to change to just a T and reducer. So here on the under eight inch, I have six inch doing the multi-branch. I have four inch doing just a T and reducer. So here, I'm expecting the same results in plant, no matter what. Here I've got the reducing T just to show you how this works. And here I've got a socket on the two inch. So this will give you how this works in four different pieces of pipe. I'm gonna save this, come right back to plant, update my specs. To get this in there, simple as checking for spec updates and update your pipe specs. So here's the application. I'm gonna take this, add a piece of pipe, make it an eight inch by six inch it put in a T and reducer. I'm gonna do it again right here. This time I'm gonna go eight inch by four inch. Also put in a T and reducer. I'll do it, uh, gotta do the pipe first. We'll do it here. I'm gonna put in to a three inch, a reducing T. And then now I'll put over here a two inch, and that put in a socket. So it did exactly what I set up in the branch table. T and reducer, T and reducer, reducing T, 
Sokolet. Exactly what I'd set up in that branch table. Now this one I had done as a multi-branch. This one I just did as T and reducer. Either one I can come in here after the fact and change it to reducing T if I wanted to. So I had no effect on any of this. I did that one with eight inch by six inch. I meant to go eight inch by four inch. Had no effect on either of these on how they worked after they were placed. The priority is strictly this one goes first. That's the priority, and that's what you're going to put in auto routing. I have found no purpose whatsoever for the secondary or tertiary priorities to the point that I actually contacted, uh, contacted Autodesk and asked them what the point is of doing this. I thought maybe there's a, some keystrokes or something to make it toggle between them. I was actually told by Autodesk it does nothing. So I see no reason wasting my time putting in a multi-branch selection. I would have done every single one of these that are multi-branch. I'm going to, just so I can see them, all those gray ones, I would have done the exact same way as a single branch. That's the way I do it. I've done it for years that way. I've never had an issue. And according to Autodesk, it's going to give you the same results within AutoCAD itself. I was actually told by somebody that this person at Autodesk, the whole advantage of doing the multi-branch is this. A teen reducer will do reducing T and stuff like they do. That's working with T and reducer, and now let's say I have another job that wants the reducing T to be priority, so I can come in here and go to the multi-branch and change that priority, and it's the convenience of that. That's what they said it's for, is just for the convenience. Here's my problem. I'm going to make T and reducer the one. Select it to one click, two click with that, come down here, multi-branches, three click, come here, pick the T and reducer is four click, five click, six click, just to change the sequence. Here's the way I do it. One click, two click, three click. I'm a lazy person. I want as few clicks as possible. It's half the clicks, half the time. I don't use multi-branch selections for that reason. Now, I've shown you how to do it. If you want to, feel free to. Nobody says you can't. You know how to do it. I'm just here to tell you that it serves no purpose. So I do single branch selections for my entire branch table. And that's it. That's all we have on the branch table. Everything's working exactly the way we need it. It's just to set up the priorities for how it's going to work when you route your pipe. So let's see if we have any questions. Let's see, I'm going to first, before I do that, well, I may need to show something, so we'll go ahead and look at the questions first. I've got to expand this, questions. Looks like there are no questions. I'll give you guys a second here, just to see if anybody wants to ask something. While it's doing that, I will. Go ahead and let's put up my final screen here so you can see it. And this lets you know some different types of training that's coming up for that we have available for both PNID and Plant 3D. 